today on Refined, bring on the Bachelor. Scared. Refined gets ready for the emotional reality roller coaster of Colton's new season. Yeah. Plus, we check in with a Seattle Bachelor alum who's still looking for love. Yeah, ladies in Seattle, I'm I'm single. I'm open. You ladies are killing me right yeah. now. Then calling all Cineholics. Calories are half the calories of our competitor. The new sweet treat shop that's almost too good to be true. And break out the A-tracks. We're doing uh, uh, things you would normally find uh, at a diner, except for um, with a little bit of that 70s throwback feel. The Woodenville restaurant that will have you feeling groovy. Chattery Fine starts now. Hi everybody, welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. We're up on Queen Anne today. You know, our guilty pleasure on the show is back. If you watch the show enough, you know our Refine team has a slight obsession with the ABC hit reality show, The Bachelor. And starting tonight, it's all about Colton. Colton looks so hot. I plan on rubbing oil all over his body. The ladies seem to be going crazy over Colton. If you remember last season, he got his heart broken by Becca. Of course, it wouldn't be The Bachelor without the drama. And this season promises to deliver big time. I am a virgin, but that's just a small part of who I am. Could Colton lose his virginity in Singapore? Maybe. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Holy. Colton! Oh, oh my God! What just happened? The Bachelor airs tonight right here on Como 4. The drama starts at 8. As much as our refined team can't wait for Colton's season, there's one guy that we wish was the next Bachelor, and that's Seattle's own Jason Tartik. Jason recently got in the hot seat with our refined roundtable to talk life and love. She is off her rocker she nuts. Is. The guy knows exactly what the producers want from him, and he delivers. It's become a rite of passage in the refined <laughs> office, our <laughs> weekly bachelor hair. roundtable. You can't touch each other for almost all day, and then you're released to a fantasy suite. Huh? <laughs> there was <laughs> the touch <laughs> begin. Every week, we dissect all the love, deceit, and shattered hearts from the latest episode of the reality romance show. She is not a good hang. She is terrifying. But we've never had our round table go face to face with an actual Bachelor contestant until now. So we love our Bachelor round tables here on Refined and it's a very special edition of the round table because we've got Jason in the house with us. Yay! Yeah. Very exciting. Oh, yeah. Good to be here. Thanks for coming in, man. I, I, I gotta ask you right off the bat, yep. how has the whirl whirlwind been? How has the whirlwind been? And, and you know, can you go anywhere without being recognized now? You know, six months ago, I'm sitting at a desk, I walk to work, I walk back to work, and same old business Monday to Friday. And now it's just, everything's changed. And it's changed for the good. And the way to work, sometimes now I have to plan 20 minutes ahead of time because I get stopped. And when I get stopped, I like to talk to people and have conversations. So it's been good crazy, but it's been crazy to say the least. Were you surprised that you actually had feelings on a reality television show? Yeah, so I was really surprised. But I will tell you, when we peeled the onion back and had one of the most, probably one of the deepest, most real conversations I've had with anyone in my life on the date in Richmond, Virginia, um, things got real for me, and they got real quick. And I think in difficult times, instead of stepping up to the plate and having tough conversations, I ran from them. But with you, every time I put it out there, I feel better about it. So the one thing was that was hard for all of us to watch was when Becca was shutting down when you guys were in Thailand. We were walking out of the temple, and I thought about the future, and I made a comment about it. And after I said it, I wanted to take it back right away. Did you even know that she was having that reaction at that moment? I know dinner was kind of a turning point, but did you know that she was talking to the producer about all that? What's wrong? I don't know, I just feel weird. I just like, feel, like I, I don't know how I'm feeling right now. It was interesting to watch it all back because I did not know that. I can't even explain what I'm feeling, I can't. and I know exactly what it feels like to be blindsided. So watching that episode honestly was devastating. I watched it once by myself and then I watched it before Men Tell All. And if I'm being honest, both times I was bawling my eyes out. No yeah, I was crying. Moving on, obviously you're the top three, you were a front runner. 
we all said, hands down, it was between you or Blake for the next Bachelor. We were shocked when it was Colton. Mm -hmm. We know that you're kind of homeboys with Colton. Mm -hmm. um, how close were you to becoming the Bachelor? Yeah, so I think if you asked the cast, I think if you asked Becca, and I think if you asked what they considered Bachelor Nation, everyone probably would have thought the same thing, Blake or I. And to answer your question about how close we were, I mean, in my opinion, narrowed down to Blake, Colton, and I. So I think we were all there. Um, and the decision process, I'm not sure, you know, what it was. Would you have said yes if they had asked you? Yeah, so if they asked me, I definitely would have said yes. So you're back here in Seattle, back to reality. Are you dating? Can the ladies find you on Hinge or Bumble? What's your <laughs> dating life like here? So I'm not on any dating apps of the sort right now. Um, I am single. I. I'm definitely open to dating. Yeah, ladies in Seattle, I'm I'm single. I'm open. Well, on that note, <laughs> we have a refined roundtable member that is usually here. She actually sits right there. Her name's Gina. Okay. She's in Europe right now. Hey, Jason, it's me, Gina. You don't know me, but I know you because I was a fan from day one of the show. Um, I am super bummed that I can't be there today, but I'm not that bummed because I'm in Spain. Anyway, I was asked to participate in this interview virtually. Describe your ideal date in Seattle. Uh, my ideal date in Seattle, I mean, it's so beautiful here, right? So you got to go on the water. Get a boat, go on the water, bring a bottle of wine, maybe a bottle of champagne. Can't beat the seafood here, so I gotta have some shellfish. And then go to like a nice, I think downtown has some really nice like high rise restaurants and stuff. So like I know Columbia Tower is awesome doing something like that. And then ending it like there's like really cool cocktail bars. And my final question is, can I take you out on your ideal date in Seattle? It would be so <laughs> awesome to meet you. It'd be an honor for me to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you're interested, just Frickin' slide into my DMs and I will answer you. So Gina, I appreciate the upfront little East Coast and you just coming right out and saying <laughs> slide in my DMs. So I have your Instagram handle. I will reach out and we'll see if we can make something work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I've heard, well, obviously you are in the Disney songs I've heard. Oh, big Disney guy. Um, yeah. Circle of Life I've heard is your yeah. favorite. Oh, that's it. Yep. Would you be willing to serenade the ladies of Seattle? <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for joining our round table. It was very yeah, enlightening on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a stranger. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. To learn more about Jason or to watch that story again, log on to our website. Seattle Refine is just getting started. You ladies are killing me right now. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, man. We're sinking our teeth into a fresh twist and ooey gooey treat. Plus, just when you thought you've heard it all. Tell me about chicken bingo. Well, chicken bingo is our family favorite. The local restaurant where chickens win you cash and the decor is a blast from the past. But first, the countdown is on to our biggest event of the year. We're talking about the So Northwest Women Show on March 9th and 10th. Every Monday until the big event, we'll draw a lucky winner to get two tickets to Sunday's show that features fashion, food, and freebies. There's even free parking this year. To learn more, head to seattlerefine.com slash contest. Welcome back to the show, I'm Garth Swanson. Well, if your New Year's resolution is to eat healthier, then there are some Seattle restaurants that are calling your name. Ethan Stoll's Marine Hardware is hopping on the health bandwagon all this month. They are serving a rotating three-course meal based around the Whole30 diet. That means no sugar, grains, or dairy. To see the full menu, head to seattlerefined.com. Also for the month of January, Salt & Straw is offering a vegan-only, plant-based menu. We're talking no dairy products at all. Some flavors include toasted coconut, milk and cookies, and the Elvis peanut butter banana split. To check out more flavors, head to seattlerefined.com. From vegan ice cream to vegan cinnamon rolls, there's a new shop called Cineholic, serving up delicious treats without all the guilt. Of course, I had to see it and taste it for myself. One look around Cineholics and your senses go crazy. One whiff of these old school cinnamon rolls and you're ready to chow. Misa and Treva are longtime business partners. 
buying into the franchise and its healthier mission behind the rolls. Each one of these piping hot beauties are 100% vegan. No dairy, no eggs, and cholesterol free. It's completely animal free, so it's all plant-based, so there's absolutely no animal products or animal testing. At Cineholic, it's all about custom gourmet cinnamon rolls. Cineholics first gained national fame after an appearance on the hit entrepreneur show Shark Tank. They uh, started in Berkeley, California and sent in their thing. They got on right away. The actual sharks gave them a deal and they wanted them to go all e-commerce, so online. And it didn't work out with packaging and shipping and things like that. So they decided then to franchise. These ladies decided to roll the dice and take a bite out of the cinnamon roll business. But just how fattening are they? Calories are half the calories of our competitor when you're doing the old school roll. Of course, if you're adding toppings and a lot of toppings, it'll add up. But yes, it's half the calories. Absolutely no cholesterol. Let's <laughs> like, like me two of them. We have a new best friend. Okay, guard. This is where it all starts. Right, oh, it looks, fresh out of the oven. Oh man, I know. That is Amazing, smelling good, right? Oh my gosh. So what we do is we just kind of check them just to make sure that the centers are also totally cooked. So you're gonna pick which frosting flavors you want to put on. Okay, here's the deal. Okay. I'm about as simple okay. as they come, but the cream cheese is amazing. I the know. The cream cheese is one of the most popular ones. You want me to do it for you? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So, Guard, what kind yeah. of toppings do you want on your cinnamon roll? Oh my gosh, this is a tough decision. What do you have? We have almonds, apples, bananas, blueberries, brownie bites, caramel sauce, chocolate chips, chocolate chip cookie bites, chocolate sauce, coconut, cookie dough, graham crackers. All right, that's okay. I get it. I get it. You got, you got a lot of stuff here. Yeah, we have a lot of options. All right, like I said, I'm a simple guy. I, I want maple and I want almonds. Okay, let's do it. Moments later, we were adding crunchy almonds and then drizzling on the maple syrup. A 100% vegan cream cheese cinnamon roll with almonds and natural maple flavor. Wow. Okay, all ready to go. You ready to try it? So this is it right this here. This is it. Oh man. All right, oh look Just at this. Just go for it. Oh my gosh, here we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> now, you ladies are killing me right now. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh man. You made it yourself. Oh. You made it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Call it the guard. Is that? Yes. Yeah. Customers love these rolls too. Oh, oh totally. Yes. Sometimes we come out and kind of watch and ask them, how was it? And they turn around, they're like, oh their mouth is full. Oh so my good. god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have frosting everywhere. I mean it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the ladies say they're set to open up two more local locations and they also cater. To learn more about Cineholic, head to SeattleRefine.com. Coming up, the local restaurant that will take you back in time. Plus, we reveal our first refined spotlight of the year, and he's doggone cute. Here at Seattle Refined, we never get tired of hearing from you. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to Refined, everybody. I'm Gard Swanson. Well, if you're like me, you probably grew up in the 70s. You know how different things are today, right? Back then, you could buy a new house for around $24,000. A gallon of gas would set you back 36 cents. And you could drive off with a new set of wheels for around 4,000 bucks. Well, nearly five decades have passed since then, but as our Malia Karlinski discovered, the 70s are alive and well in Woodenville. Come follow me. Let's go back in time to 1970-something. Walking in the doors of Woodenville Cut Shop is like stepping back into a simpler decade, a time when Steve McQueen and Ally McGraw were the it couple. Every home had a freestanding fireplace, and velvet paintings were in vogue. Husband and wife team Gabe Johnson and Megan Tweed created this restaurant, it was partly inspired by Gabe's childhood. My idea of community was growing up in Aberdeen in the 70s. I remember going out to dinner with my parents, yeah. and we'd go to the restaurant for hours, and they'd see their friends, and the kids would do this, and we'd walk around, and we'd talk to people. You know, we don't want people just to come here and sit down with a menu and eat. We want them to mingle, get off their phones, talk to each other. The couple takes this 70s thing seriously. Check out their threads. 
Well, I got to talk to you guys about your outfits because they're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this you guys? Is this just for when you're at work? No. No, unfortunately not. We, I know. We might have built a place around the fact that we dress like this all the time. So. I know. How would you guys describe your looks? Definitely have a '70s rock and roll vibe going on on there, you know. But. Yeah, it's kind of like I wear too much denim, probably. Yeah. Denim is always in style, and Stowe so is throwing back a beverage at the bar. I think it's an amazing space. Uh, the staff, the ownership is uh, amazing. They've uh, obviously created a very eclectic space for us to all enjoy. And Low key, chill, cozy, cool. Were you alive in the 70s? <laughs> no. Yes. It's my skincare product that I use. Yeah. yeah, I was not alive in the 70s. What is your favorite thing about coming here? Steve and Megan. What do you guys think it is about the 70s and maybe early 80s that we are missing now? I think the 70s, when we got past Vietnam, America started to express itself and its freedom. So there was a sense of a little bit of devil may care, smoking the bandit, breaking some rules as long as you're not hurting anybody. I got a barbecue, your bandit. I got a smoking report for you. What's your handle, son? Speaking of smoking and the bandit, in the lounge, there's an altar to the man himself, Burt Reynolds. And that's just the beginning of all the out of sight artifacts here. So Gabe, this is literally like walking into your rec room yep. in uh, 1976. Absolutely. Is that on purpose? That's um, absolutely on purpose. This is really harkens back to the days that kids are roughhousing in their grandparents' basement and they had their curio cabinet with all their collectibles on it. So Well, you've got the patron saint of the 70s. Right. Well, Sally Field. What are some of the other things on the shelf that you really love? Personally, we have a bunch of owls around here, these ceramic owls in the 70s. And some of these old beer signs we actually got from the crawl space here. Okay, now for the kids at home, what would this be? Oh, well, this is basically an iPod. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than right. an iPod. Yeah, it's like the egg-shaped eight tracks from the 70s. And if you're digging the decor, check out the Funkadelic food. We're doing a... Um, you know, things you would normally find uh, at a diner, except for um, with a little bit of that 70s throwback feel. Chef Danny Ludwig's menu is a blast from the past. Right now, everyone's been really into the meatballs. We've got these veal meatballs made with salami and it's kind of a secret recipe, but really good, <laughs> really good ingredients. Well, meatballs feel very 1970s to me. Absolutely. And I yeah. noticed you also have fettuccine alfredo we on the menu. We do have fettuccine alfredo, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that deviled right. eggs. And deviled eggs, correct, yeah. Is, um, it, is it fun for you as a chef? to make some of those things from the 70s that maybe have been, I don't want to say out of style, but you know, they haven't been on the menu at a lot of restaurants lately. Absolutely, it's fun to, to show people things that maybe they haven't seen. Speaking of things that people haven't seen, the Cut Shop hosts some special events. Tell me about chicken bingo. Well, chicken bingo is our family favorite. In this game, a chicken is placed on a giant bingo board and people buy a number for a buck. If the chicken does its thing on your number, you're a winner. But you wouldn't believe the rush of adrenaline <laughs> you'll receive and the thrill of winning $54. They also rock out with their concerts held in the parking lot. People of a certain age to bring their children of a certain age to experience and time travel back to when they were young. And there's and, heavy metal happening. And there was heavy metal. Woodenville Cut Shop is bringing back the decor, food, and friendship of a decade that was truly dynamite. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. For more on Woodenville Cut Shot, head to SeattleRefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to Refine. All right, a couple more things before we go. A big time musical hits Seattle soon. Dear Evan Hansen makes its Seattle debut on January 23rd. It's the powerful story of a young man with social difficulties. Dear Evan Hansen has won six Tony Awards, including Best Musical. It plays at the Paramount through February 2nd. And of course, we can't leave without showing you our first refined spotlight of 2019. Meet Brisket. The one-year-old pug mix is a southern rescue who is now living in the Pacific Northwest. We're told he likes treats, hiking, and riding the bus, but he's not a fan of wearing sweaters and car rides. If you'd like to submit a pet to be our next refined spotlight, email us at hello at seattlerefined.com. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I'm Gart Swanson. Thanks for joining us here on Seattle Refined. We'll see you next time.